Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Joachim Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Tuesday, September 26th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. John's First Catholic Letter, chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. No man has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his own spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Lord has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we know and believe the love God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. In this is love perfected with us, that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And he who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 19, verses 25 through 28, and chapter 21, verses 24 and 25. Let us be attentive. At that time, standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. This is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things, and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things which Jesus did, were every one of them to be written, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today in the Orthodox Church, we remember the falling asleep in the Lord of St. John the Theologian. St. John is the writer of the gospel of the same name. And in that gospel, there is an unambiguous understanding of just who Jesus is, because in the very first paragraphs of that gospel, we know very clearly that he is the Son of God, he is the Word, he is God, and he took on flesh and dwelled on earth. And so the rest of the gospel just bears witness to that great theological event. St. John is the brother of James, both of whom are the sons of Zebedee and Zebedee's wife, Salome. Salome happens to be the stepsister of our Lord, or at least the stepsister in the flesh, and she is a daughter of Joseph, the betrothed to Mary. So in this particular gospel, of course, we have such great passages that are held at high esteem, among them, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and so many others that are very similar to it. St. John is called the theologian, and in our understanding of the word, theologian does not mean someone who is has a doctorate degree in theology, but rather someone who has a particularly precise encounter with God. All of us should strive to be theologians, to have a prayer life that is so highly developed that we too encounter God more or less face to face. But St. John, along with St. Gregory the theologian, St. Simeon the new theologian, have had specific revelatory events in their lives that bring them face to face with the divine presence. In John's case, in addition to the gospel that he wrote, and several letters that are found in the New Testament, he also is known for writing the Apocalypse or the Revelation of St. John. In that, we have a lurid account of what is going to take place as the world comes closer and closer to the second coming of our Lord. 
It is meant to be something to remind us to remain steadfast in our faith, to remind us that challenges are always going to come and are going to come close even to overwhelming us. But as long as we remain steadfast, as long as we remain faithful, those things shall not overcome us. And indeed, in the end, we will behold a new heaven and a new earth. And then he gives really beautiful accounts of exactly what it is when Jesus comes back in his triumphant second coming. So St. John had that vision that God gave him. He also was one of the witnesses of our Lord's transfiguration on Mount Tabor, along with his brother James and the uh, also St. Peter. So we have all of those things. And in his letters that he wrote, he talks of great detail of those experiences of Christ transfigured and so forth, that God is light and love, very positive, powerful, affirming messages for us who follow to hold on to and again to preserve our faith. Now, St. John has one of the rare dis distinctions of being the disciple who did not die through martyrdom. He died of old age. Now, that's not to say that he didn't suffer persecution, and it's not to say he didn't suffer adversity. Of course he did. He himself was exiled to the island of Patmos, where he languished for a great deal of time. And so he, like so many of the other disciples and apostles, suffered for his Christ and bore his own cross. One of the most poignant stories that we see in the Gospel of St. John is that while our Lord is on the very cross, he gazes down and sees John standing next to his own mother, to Mary, which, by the way, she is never called Mary in the Gospel of John. But nevertheless, our Lord sees his mother, sees John, and tells her, Woman, behold your son. And he says to John about Mary, Son, behold your mother. And so from that very time forward, he takes care of her as if she was his very own mother. So these are great heartwarming accounts of indeed this disciple that our Lord loved very dearly. And it is very clear in the writings that he gave that he loved Christ equally as much. So we remember him today in his falling asleep in the Lord. And we pray that through his intercessions, our Lord will have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Well, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Share this with your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the section below. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and everyone that you love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Have a great day and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.